Good day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about grease thickener technologies. So what a grease thickener is, and some of the different technologies and what it does. Alright, so going back to our basic definition of grease from the last grease video, we said it's a solid or semi-solid lubricant formed as a dispersion of thickening agents in a liquid lubricant. So the key there is thickening agents. So what are these thickening agents? Well, first of all, uh, we know that they make up a considerable amount of grease. So we said in the last video that it makes up about 20%. But if you wanted a thicker NLGI grade, again, we'll have to get to what that means, um, we would increase the amount of thickener in the grease, um, and that would make it more solid. Uh, so we said that grease was a solid or semi-solid fluid. Um, the more thickener there is, the more solid the grease becomes. That's a pretty basic explanation. The other basic explanation that we gave was that a thickener is like a sponge. And I said last time around that the grease formulators are probably going to hate me for saying that because it is an oversimplification. But the reason we use the sponge analogy is because we say that, you know, imagine a sponge. Um, it has water in it in those kind of pore spaces. And when you apply a, a force to that sponge or a, or a stress, right, we squeeze the sponge and the water comes out. When you release that pressure, the water can go back into the sponge. And that's effectively what the thickener does in grease. So it holds the oil. When a load is applied to it, it releases the oil the oil is what actually does the lubricating. And when the force is, is taken away, or when the load is taken away, that oil goes back into the thickener. That's why it's so effective. It's because the oil then stays in place. Practically, this is what a thickener actually looks like. So um, I think this is from the NLGI Association. Um, I think I got this from their India chapter. Um, this is what it will look like under a scanning electron microscope. So it's this kind of fibrous mess. Um, and that's very much like a sponge. You know, the oil can, can go in between those pore spaces, and that's where it gets retained. All right, let's talk about thickener types. So we start with all thickener types, and we split them into what are called soap and non-soap technologies. And I'll get into the differences. So... Within soap, we have simple and complex. So within, within the simple soaps, you've probably heard about, you know, a calcium soap or a lithium soap. There are a whole bunch of other ones too. You know, barium, um, um, sodium is, is a reasonably common one as well. And then we also have complex soaps. So we might have aluminium complex, calcium complex, lithium complex. Um, hopefully you have heard these terms. Among the non-soap thickeners... We have things like calcium sulfonate, clay, polyurea, and I'm going to split out polyurea and shear stable polyurea because they have reasonably different properties. Okay, so this is how we kind of define the thickener families. All right, so what is a soap? Because if we define what a soap is, that'll help us understand the difference between soaps and non-soap thickeners. So soap is the salt of a fatty acid. That's all it is. So we might ask ourselves, okay, so are grease soaps the same as like a hand soap? Chemically, yes, right? So when we say it's the salt of a fatty acid, what we're saying is that it's part of this reaction. So acid plus base gives you salt plus water. So you probably learnt that in high school chemistry. And in the case of, let's say, a simple lithium soap grease, right, we are making a lithium salt. That's why they sometimes refer to as metal soaps. So in the case of uh, a lithium soap, we would take lithium hydroxide would be our base. Something like stearic acid would be our, our acid, so that's a fatty acid. So now we have our, our component fatty acid. That would give us the salt of a fatty acid and water. So that's how we create a thickener. So the lithium stearate would be the thickener, 
and that is the salt of a fatty acid that has been reacted with a metal base. So I hope that kind of clears that up. Um, stearic acid has this formula, lithium, lithium hydroxide has this formula, so th this is how you might see it uh, go together. All right, so going back to our thickener types, okay, now we can distinguish between the soap and the non-soap thickeners. So soaps are salt of a fatty acid, that's how they're created. Um, we distinguish between the simple and complex ones because uh, complexes basically have a complexing agent that's introduced, which helps to increase the amount of cross-linking between uh, those fibers, right? And, and so that gives it very different physical properties. The non-soaps are manufactured in an entirely different process, right? Um, and so they are not formed by that reaction of an acid and a base. So all of these have different, very different properties. And the reason why there are such a huge family of different thickener technologies is because they all impart quite different properties. Now, this is kind of pretty general in nature. So I talk about oxidation stability, high temperature performance, low temperature pumpability, etc. And one thing that you'll notice is that as we go, you know, to the bottom of the list, you'll notice that the lithium complex, the polyurea, and the shear stable polyurea technologies have pretty good um, you know, properties across the board in general. Um, however, the reason that you might want to specifically use another thickener technology over those could be a couple of reasons. Firstly, cost, right? So standard lithium greases are much cheaper, cheaper than lithium complex greases. So all the, although the performance is not as good, um, it might be good enough for your application. There are also other circumstances in which other thickener technologies are standouts in a particular performance ca category. So as an example, I've highlighted calcium sulfonate greases have excellent water resistance properties, probably the best of all the thickener technologies. And so if you have a wet application, like in, let's say, a paper mill or an area where there's lots of steam and water contamination, a calcium sulfonate is, is going to be your go-to thickener technology because it'll beat the pants off everything else in terms of uh, water resistance and water stability. Similarly, clays, and you know bentonite clays in particular, perform extremely well at high temperature. So um, often aviation greases, for example, are, are clay-based. Um, and, and that high temperature performance is something that you really only get from clay thickener technologies. So again, Although it might be relatively poor from a shear stability or a compatibility standpoint, um, you would go to a clay if you re had a really high temperature application. Now, I spoke a little bit about compatibility. Um, you might have seen compatibility charts, and I'll go in into this in a lot more detail in a future video, but different thickener technologies are compatible or not compatible with each other, right? So um, what does incompatibility look like? It can mean uh, that you get a, a softening of a, of a mixture of greases or it could thicken up, right? Both those circumstances are really bad because if something softens, it could release from the application, but if something thickens, um, it could get too hard and actually seize you know, your bearing or your gearbox. So compatibility of grease technologies is a really important thing. Um, I would also say, stress, that this chart that I've put up is general in nature. You really need to test the compatibility of two greases that you're planning on switching out. And the reason for this is, now we have a general uh, chart here for the compatibility of thickener technologies, but it may be that the base oils of your two greases are not compatible with each other. Or it could be that the additive packages are not compatible for, with each other. So as an example, um, the way that uh, the chemistry of a polyurea grease is very different from a lithium complex grease. And that means that the additive packages that get put in them are hugely different. They might as well be from different universes. And as a result, it could be the additives that are not compatible with each other as opposed to the, the, the actual um, uh, thickeners um, that are being used. So compatibility is something that's really important to understand. And again, we'll get to this in a, in a future video. All right, I hope this has given you a bit of a flavor for 
different thickener technologies and what a thickener does. Um, as usual, if you've got questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.